In this lesson, we'll learn about the different areas inside the Sketchbook Designer interface. All right, great. So uh, if this is your first time opening Sketchbook Designer, then you're probably looking at a screen very similar to what I'm looking at here. So uh, anytime you launch the application, uh, you are actually going to be creating a brand new empty document, unless of course you're opening an existing document. So um, now in this lesson, we're just going to kind of take a tour around several of these areas and kind of see how they work. So uh, let's start up at the top. Up here, this gray bar you see that runs along the very top of my interface. This is referred to as the menu bar. Pretty standard thing in several applications. You see we have several different drop down menus here. So if we were to glance under file, you'll see several options that are uh, fairly familiar if we want to create a new document or open an existing document or even a recent document that we've worked on. So um, this is the file menu. We have edit, layer, page, so on and so forth. Now, let's go ahead and look under the window drop down here because under this menu, we actually have several of the areas in the interface uh, and we're going to be learning about these in just a moment, but you can actually turn them on and off from the window drop down. And if you ever want to get back to the default layout, you can always come right back over here and access the default sketchbook designer layout. So um, this is the window drop down and again, there's keyboard shortcuts associated to a lot of these different editors, managers and so on and so forth. So um, let's go ahead and move immediately below that and you're going to notice this long bar right here. Now this is our toolbar and we can actually customize the location of that just simply by clicking on this little gray tab over to the left and dragging it wherever we want that to be. So we'll just leave that up here at the top. If we wanted to close the toolbar out, again there's a little X in the corner uh, just like several of these little windows have. Now the toolbar, what you should know about that right now is that depending on what we have currently selected inside of Sketchbook Designer, this toolbar could change up a little bit. Now, being that I'm working on a brand new fresh document here, uh, if we glance over here at our layer manager, you'll notice that I have a vector one layer selected. So uh, up here in my toolbar, we have this little icon right here. That's telling me that we currently have a vector layer targeted. Now, Sketchbook Designer really has some great tools for combining both vector artwork with raster or pixel based artwork. So uh, we need to be able to kind of switch back and forth between tools that work with both different styles. So if we come over here and select this paint one layer, notice what happens. Over here inside our toolbar, the look changes. We now have a little palette icon over here to the left and the tools changed up just a bit based on the selection of this paint one layer. So um, you can see here that this toolbar actually changes based on what we have selected. There's actually a couple other states for it. We'll be taking a look at those later on in this course. But this is the toolbar inside of Sketchbook Designer. Now, this area right below, this big white area, we're going to be referring to that as the canvas from here on out. This is Sketchbook Designer's canvas. This is where we create our artwork. Pretty simple. Now over here to the left of the canvas, we have a couple of little things that maybe if you've, you've used an application like Sketchbook Pro, you've heard them referred to as pucks. Well, these aren't necessarily referred to as pucks in Sketchbook Designer. This one on the top, this is going to be our color editor. And in its current state, it's going to work very similar to the color puck inside of Sketchbook Pro. So we can just simply click on that. We can select from our hue ring around the outside or we can select our luminance and saturation here on this little diamond in the center. Uh, but there's actually another view for this color editor that we can access just simply by clicking on this little down arrow. And that's going to expand this out into a full blown window that really has a lot of functionality. Now I don't want to get into this in this lesson. We'll actually be exploring this color editor in an upcoming lesson. So um, let's uh, just go ahead and just minimize that back down again by clicking that little arrow in the top left corner. And we can actually again reposition this anywhere we want to inside our interface. So uh, we'll go ahead and leave that right here. Now this little uh, puck below that is actually called the attribute editor. It's not a puck in Sketchbook Designer. It's called the attribute editor. And as you can see we can move it just like we can with the color editor. Now this attribute editor is going to change depending on what tool or
or brush we have selected up here. So um, right now, let me go ahead and just expand that out. And you can see that I have the Select Curve tool selected here. And we have a single setting here. We have a grip setting. Now if I come in here and start to select some of these brushes, you'll notice that it changes depending on what exactly it is that I have selected. So the attribute editor is a way to configure the tool or brush that you're currently utilizing and really uh, sort of extend its functionality by giving us some additional settings for that particular tool. So uh, let's go ahead and minimize that here. I'm going to go ahead and just switch back to my select curve tool and let's bounce over here to the right hand side. Now we looked at this a moment ago. This is going to be our layer manager here inside of Sketchbook Designer. And um, again, we're going to be spending an entire lesson just on the functionality built in here. Now with this particular window, we actually have some functionality built in again through this little button in the top left hand corner. We have some different views for this. So if I click on that again, um, you can see here that it sort of expands our layers. And uh, we, if we had artwork on our canvas, we would actually be able to see sort of a thumbnail preview of what that artwork was on these layers. If we click on that again, it's going to go to this sort of minimal, uh, minimal view where it just shows us sort of a composite of what all of our artwork looks like together here. So uh, I'll go and click on that one more time to take us back to our original state here for the layer manager. All right, fantastic. Now let's kind of pan down here to the lower part of the interface and you'll notice that I have this little semi-transparent toolbar that actually as I get closer to it it becomes more opaque. This is actually going to be called the navigation bar. It's not a toolbar, it's a navigation bar. And inside this navigation bar are different tools for basically navigating the canvas. Whether we are uh, using the navigation wheel, fitting the canvas and to its actual size or fitting it to view, panning the canvas, rotating the canvas, and so on and so forth. Now we're going to break these functions down and kind of explore these in the next lesson. Uh, but this is the navigation bar. Now we have this great big thing right below that, which is called the custom palette. Now if I were to maybe just kind of mouse over this area between the canvas and the custom palette, we can actually expand this up, uh, drag that up a little bit, and you can see there's actually kind of a scroll bar over here on the side. You can see that there's quite a bit of content inside the custom palette. Now, this is where you store any kind of custom brushes, custom gradient fills, custom color fills, or custom texture fills that you have created or maybe you're using for your project. So um, you can see there's different tabs that run along the top of the custom palette. You can see right now I'm on my brushes tab and we have a lot of different types of brushes here. Uh, if we come over here to ramps, you're going to see various different kinds of gradients. Now these uh, all have sort of a thumbnail preview next to a paint bucket or a fill bucket. Uh, over here we have building materials. These are going to be uh, texture fills. Uh, the same here with wooden tile as well as fabric and nature. Various texture fills. Now lastly over here is a color tab and this is where if we have created custom colors that we want to save, we would do that here inside the color tab of the custom palette. All right, great. I'm going to go ahead and just drag this back down, kind of where we got it here. We'll drag it down to right about there. And let's we'll come back over here to brushes where we had that. Now, um, one thing you might find uh, useful as you're working inside a sketchbook designer, if some of these windows start to get in your way, and maybe you like really more of a clean, minimal view of the artwork you're creating, you can always hide all of these user interface elements here. Uh, and you can do that by hitting the tab key. So um, you can see if I hit the tab key, we hide all of those. We can also come up here to window and choose hide all UI. And if I click on that there, um, you can see those all go away. Now the custom palette doesn't go away, but uh, let's come up back up here again. If we wanted to, we could always hit Alt Z or just come in and hide the custom palette that way. So uh, in this lesson, we've learned about the various areas inside the sketchbook designer interface. Uh, let's go ahead and move on at this point. In the next lesson, we'll pick up where we're leaving off here, and we're going to learn about how we can begin to customize as well as navigate the sketchbook designer canvas.